Iraq and Iran signed an agreement earlier this year to tighten border security along Iraq's Kurdish region. Iran claims that armed Kurdish dissidents there pose a threat to its security. I sat down with Iraqi Foreign Minister Dr. Fouad Hussein to talk about regional security threats and how the climate crisis is affecting his country. I'm Frank Uciardo and this is TRT World One-on-One. -on -One. Foreign Minister Dr. Fouad Hussein, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. It's been quite a busy and historic week at the General Assembly this year. Yes. What has been your experience off the top? Anything really kind of I have been up? here often. This is not the first time. Right, but I'm just saying this uh, year. Each, seems each, like each year is, uh, is uh, rather different. It has to do with the, the topics and, of course, uh, who will represent the countries who are here. But uh, I've seen it this year is uh, really uh, very serious and there are uh, very important issues. Uh, I mean, most of the leaders, they were talking about uh, challenges that the world is facing, which has to do with uh, climate change. Uh, of course, uh, also about wars and Ukrainian-Russian war, and about famine, about uh, security of the food, security of the energy. So it is a uh, a uh, different time, I may say. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about the climate crisis and the, the global heating impacting on your country. Tell us Very about much. that. Very yeah. much. Tell us about we that. are really facing these challenges in Iraq and the Gulf country in, in general. The whole uh, area is uh, facing this uh, threat and uh, we are f mm, facing the threat of drought. We are facing the threat of having shortages, uh, uh, water shortages. We are facing um, uh, that the climate uh, is, is not healthy uh, because of burning of gas. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why we are trying to deal with these issues. So one of the priority of this, our government now has to do how we are going to face these challenges which has to do with the climate change. I think a lot of people don't understand that this affects directly the livelihood of your people, the way they earn their living, right? That's true. When we are talking about water shortages, then it has to do with uh, everybody, and especially with the farmers. And as you know, our country's name is Mesopotamia in history, and that means the land of two rivers. So imagine if Iraq would be without uh, water or without these two rivers. So it is very dangerous, this threat. I want to move on to some border issues. Now, apparently Iraq and Iran have had some kind of an agreement to clear the border areas of armed groups. Can you tell us about that? About? Iraq and Iran apparently have some kind of a agreement to clear the border areas of terrorists? Tell us about that. Um, you see, the Iranian demanded to, to remove the uh, some groups which are opposition, I mean, Iranian opposition. And to be honest, these groups, they were living in Iraq, uh, some of them for 40, uh, some of them for 50 years. So you have got second, third generation of those people who were, they came originally as refugees. So the Iranian, they were demanding that those people who were on the border and they had weapons in their hand, to disarm them and to remove them from the border, uh, border area, and we did it. So there was an, an, uh, an uh, security agreement between both sides. And uh, Kurdish authority in Kurdistan also cooperated with the federal government. As a result, uh, they built five, uh, let's say, refugee camps. And those people, ha uh, they have been brought back from the mountains, from the remote areas. And now they are staying in, in these uh, refugee camps. And from our side, we feel that we were committed to the agreement and we implemented the, the uh, security agreement. The U.S. military has a presence there still. How much longer are they going to be there? No, U.S. presence is in Iraq on the basis of, let's say, um, invitation of Iraqi side. And in fact, we are talking about 2,500 
I, um, people, most of them, they are advisors to the Iraqi forces, and some of them, they are giving training to Iraqi forces. So, uh, let's, uh, the, the task of these forces is limited. It has to do with advising and training, nothing else. So, th we are not talking about combat force. Yeah, no, I ask that because uh, a lot of people might have the perception that there's still a lot of remaining U.S. fingerprints on Iraqi territory since the war years. No, no, it is, uh, it is uh, really about 2,500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and another reason I ask that is because uh, back just after, during the war and after the war, I was sitting here at the U.N. with a minister by the name of Jose Zabari, and uh, he said to me when he was leaving, he says, I hope the U.S. doesn't forget Iraq when they're leaving. And I think he also meant that economically as well. No, you see the ties or relationships between Washington and Baghdad is different now. In the past, of course, was the whole relationship was depending heavily on security matters and military matters. But nowadays we pass this stage especially after the collapse of so-called uh, ISIS state. Uh, so the threat is not anymore there or you, comparable with the past is not anymore so threat as it was in 2014, 15, and 16, 17. So the relationship now is based on economic ties, trade ties, inviting uh, the American companies, especially oil, gas, electricity companies, to to invest or to work in Iraq, and also we have got also other fields so in which we are cooperating, such as health, education, higher education, uh, culture. All these fields now are uh, the area of uh, cooperation between the United States and Iraq. I want to ask you about the Daesh prison camps. How much of a threat do you believe they might pose to the security of the region in Iraq? I think when you talk about the camp, you are talking about Al Hol camp. Exactly. Al Hol camp is in the in Syria, but it's not far away from the border. It is That's about 15, 15 kilometers far away from Iraqi border. This camp, in fact, is a very dangerous camp. Why? Uh, it is true, it has been controlled by Syrian democratic forces, but uh, those who are living there or staying there, uh, mostly they are families of, uh, of the uh, uh, ISIS uh, terrorist organization, or some of them, they are terrorists. Uh, of course, we are not talking about the children. Half of the camp, in fact, they are children. So children of these uh, groups, so the question is, how are we going to deal with those people? Half of them, they are Iraqis. The other half, they are Syrian, European, other Arab countries. So there are also many, many foreigners there. As for the Iraqis, we, we developed a plan to gradually to bring them back to another camp inside Iraq and to try to integrate them into the society, but in a different way, of course, to prepare the ground. Also, to re-educate, especially the children, because they have been educated completely on the basis of the ideology of ISIS. So that's why the camp is dangerous if we are not going to take care of those people there and uh, re-educate the children and take back the Iraqis, and we are doing that. But unfortunately, many other countries who have got their own people, some, some of them, they are terrorists. Until now, they are not cooperating very much. Uh, so we hope that other countries also, they are going to take the same initiative as we took, so that they can take uh, their own people back, their own terrorists back. So otherwise, it will be dangerous. If uh, Syrian Democratic Forces will lose their control on the camp, so what does it mean for us? That means they are going to cross the border. And that means they are going to restart their organization and fight us. So security-wise, security uh, for us, it's essential to ask other countries also to help us and to help themselves so that we can get rid of this camp.
In terms of regional security, uh, I wanted to get your reaction to a comment by the Saudi Crown Prince that said basically, you know, if Iran develops a nuclear weapon, we should have one too. Okay, that is of course a an, an, um, policy which has to do with these countries. But uh, in general, if we are talking about security of the region, we need different kind of security. In fact, we need to cooperate together. We need to secure each other. And we must understand security of one country has to, is interlinked, interconnected with the security of other country. Uh, so that's why uh, it will be better to have a collective security. And collective se security, it means uh, reaching an agreement, not to develop these kinds of weapons. These kinds of weapons in our area it is very dangerous. So I, myself, and I think the majority of the people in the area, uh, they don't want to have these kinds of opens in the area because the area suffered a lot. Many countries in the area, they were in long wars, especially Iraq, Iran. Uh, so we want to get rid of the idea of having wars. We want to get rid of the idea of having these kinds of weapons which uh, kills millions of people if it will be used. Uh, so the best solution for the security of the region is to have uh, to work together and to have collective security. In closing, what was your message to the General Assembly this year? We made it clear that what we are doing inside Iraq is um, a new area. We are trying to build our economy. We are to, uh, trying to provide service to our people. In the first place, we are thinking about our people, how to serve our people. But uh, also, we are thinking about the region, uh, security of the region. That's why we made it clear, the Prime Minister in his speech made it clear that Iraq is, uh, uh, even if we have got some problems with our neighboring countries, the only way is to uh, to solve these problems through negotiation. And we said it clear, the Prime Minister said it clear, this must be clear, uh, that we are committed to the resolutions of Security Council, which has to do with Iraq and the war in the area, uh, the invasion of Iraq to Kuwait. He mentioned that, that uh, we are committed to the, security, to the resolutions of, uh, of Security Council, but we are also committed to all agreements that we have with all neighboring countries. Dr. Fouad Hussein, Iraq's foreign minister, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. Very nice to thank meet you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you.